presenting a contemporaneous biopsy and laser interstitial thermal therapy for two treatment for fractured brain metastasis. This is a 43-year-old female who was diagnosed with invasive ductal breast cancer in 2012. She has well-controlled systemic disease. She has known brain metastasis and underwent cyberknife radio surgery one year ago to a left frontal and left parietal lesion. She presents with headaches and has no neurological signs or symptoms. Her neurological exam is non-focal. MR imaging demonstrated enhancing lesions to the left frontal and parietal cortex near the atrium with radiologic progression and worsening edema. Given the fact that she has progression of two intracranial lesions after radio surgery, there is concern for tumor progression versus radiation necrosis. Therefore, expedient diagnosis and treatment may be necessary. A stereotactic biopsy can be performed to assess whether this is simply radiation change or progressive tumor. If the lesion has evidence of active tumor, laser interstitial thermal ablation will provide decreased edema as well as cytoreduction. reduction. With a concern for refractory metastatic disease and radiation necrosis, we prefer to conduct a preoperative magnetic resonance perfusion imaging to help predict active tumor burden in patients who have been previously treated with radiation. In this case, relative cerebral blood volume was elevated compared to contralateral white matter, suggesting the presence of active tumor. As a result, we proceeded with the plan for concurrent biopsy and laser ablation. At our institution, the stereotactic biopsy is confirmed with the intraoperative OARM that is co-registered with the preoperative navigation. Another intraoperative OARM provides confirmation that the biopsy needle remains within the target lesion. The biopsy needle is introduced and the tissue is retrieved to a permanent section and frozen section. Afterwards, the laser fiber is introduced within the same tract with care to ensure that the anchor is secured to the drill hole. In institutions without an intraoperative MRI, this technique prevents returning to the aortic fiber misplacement. Another OR spin confirms the position of the laser fiber within the lesion, and the patient is then taken to the MRI suite for special care to protect the laser fiber. Laser interstitial thermal therapy provides real-time magnetic resonance thermometry to evaluate the degree of ablation. Target temperature is greater than 60 degrees Celsius, provides coagulative necrosis within a lesion. Temperatures between 45 and 60 degrees Celsius may provide reversible thermal damage. MR thermometry can provide temperature limits around the lesion to protect eloquent adjacent cortex. LIT requires that temperature boundaries are placed within an eloquent adjacent cortex, such as the optic tracts. It is important to know that CSF spaces, such as the ventricles and cisterns, act as a heat sink that will prevent heat transfer. When initiating laser interstitial thermal therapy, slow ablation should be started to assess the thermal map and provide initial feedback. High initial energy ablation can cause uncontrolled coagulation of adjacent tissues. A post-operative MRI can confirm the degree of ablation. The volumetric assessment of a new ring enhancement within 24 hours will provide the degree of laser ablation. This area of enhancement also suggests the degree of new blood-brain barrier disruption that may persist for up to six weeks. This would suggest that patients may benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy after LIT to help treat residual microscopic disease. Future prospective studies may be helpful in addressing treatment for refractory brain metastasis. In conclusion, concurrent stereotactic biopsy and LIT may be a safe and efficacious method for both the diagnosis and treatment of deep lesions that are otherwise not amenable to standard adjuvant treatment modalities.